National EFT Training Institute in Canada. And uh, I took a 10 month program there to become certified as the emotional success coach and EFT practitioner. Mm. EFT, it's a research based, scientifically proven method for releasing energy blocks throughout your body. And anytime you have a trauma, big or small, it leaves a little blip in your energy system. And when your energy's flowing, you're doing well, you're like happy, everything's good. But when you've got these blockages, you're usually overreacting to certain situations because you're still reacting to the old one. And the more that you it happens, the bigger that block gets. And this is where you get triggers. If you've ever heard people refer to triggers, it's like, you know, for me, one of my triggers would be if um, someone didn't listen to me, if I thought they, if they interrupted me or something, you know, it would be like, oh, I would so overreact. I'd be like, oh, what do you think? You don't care what I have to say, you know. I, it was not that situation I was reacting to. Impossible. I could never get that upset over something so small. I was reacting to stuff that had happened earlier in my life. In the past, yeah. Yeah, and that's what EFT will clear. You tap on the meridian points hmm. on your body. You discuss the situation you're in. It's, it's about the mind-body connection, right? Your, your mind and where your thoughts are and how it's affecting your body and then how they work together to clear it, really. So when you talk about meridian points, are you talking about like acupuncture points? Yes, yes, it's similar. This is like acupressure points. Ah, okay. And when, we're, when we're tapping, we're tapping on acupressure points. So there is a similarity there to acupuncture. Right, I guess the acupuncture pressure point is kind of a little more general like you don't I, I would suspect I don't know you know but yeah. but anyways yeah so okay so cool so it's a way to kind of communicate with your nervous system yeah yeah you can say that. And, and you clear out all those blockages that you're carrying around and you can uh, you can use it for physical pain emotional pain for phobias for anything really you can think of Right, great. And so, yeah, so as we go on, as we talk, we're going to relate that to the empty nest situation. Now, yes. so, but, but what I want you to do, folks, is if you're watching this, um, pop your name in the comments section, let us know where you're from, give us some love, give, give Carol some love. Uh, and if you have any questions as we're going on, um, you know, feel, feel free to ask. Okay, and we'll see if we can't um, get to those. Well, we will get to those. Also, I want to say that Carol has a special gift for you. If you stay toward the end of this program, she's got, um, she's got something special for you, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go on. But, uh, okay, great. So let's get back to this. Now, how about the other? What, what is infinite possibilities? What, what are the other things that you do? Tell us about that. So Infinite Possibilities, The Art of Living Your Dreams is a program based on the best-selling novel by Mike Dooley. Uh -huh. And this program is about discovering your uh, limiting beliefs, stepping into your power and discarding them, and taking baby steps towards your dreams and towards accomplishing whatever you're trying to ac <coughs> excuse me, accomplish. And that's why uh, the two, that's a program on its own. EFT is something different, but because the nature of that program involves discovering your limiting beliefs and letting go of them, right. getting over your fears in order to take steps, it just goes perfectly with EFT. The two go hand in hand. Nice. So, you know, once you discover a limiting belief, we tap on it, it's gone. How long have you been doing this? Like how long have you been doing the Mike Dooley stuff? Uh, the Mike Dooley stuff I've been doing uh, two years, two and a half years. Wow. January of 2016 that I got certified. The EFT, I mean, my first EFT course was in 2011. But I did not take my 10-month program for a couple of years. See, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to... My, one of my certificates, I can't remember. It's been quite a few years. <laughs> Let's say I started in 2011 with EFT. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've got some experience with emotional freedom technique and I'm like a body talk system practitioner and do a couple of other things. And I got quite a history in terms of healthcare, you know, worked in pharmacy and ditched that and, you know, big story there. But anyway, 
I was somebody who had incredible anxiety and every morning I would wake up with this brutal dread, <sighs> doom, you know, you know <laughs> besides a lot of other things. But um, anyway, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try this EFT and I'm just going to give it a shot and see what happens. And so I, I kind of made a promise to myself that I was going to do it um, um, every morning for two weeks and I, and I, and I kind of got something off of, of YouTube and I did it every morning for two weeks and lo and behold, it made a difference for me. So it didn't make sense. So the reason I'm saying that is because I've had some clients who have said, what is this tapping stuff? Like this seems weird, whatever, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if it seems weird. It actually works. It can yeah. take us through something, you know, as we, um, as, as we carry on as, and as we go through this, she's going to, uh, um, we're actually going to see it in action, right? So, yeah, so awesome. So, tell us about about what happened for you. You know, when you, you know, kind of when you entered this empty nest situation. What what is that anyway? What is empty nest? Well, empty nest is just this this grief, uh, sadness, anxiety that can happen to a parent either as the time approaches that their children will be leaving. In my case, it happened before they left. In your case, it didn't happen until after they were gone, mm. but it's still, it's this connection, the grief connected with losing that full-time job of parenting, of what you've been doing with your life for probably 17, 18 years. If let's say your kids are going to university, it's going to be somewhere in that time frame. And uh, if you have younger children, of course, they'll be longer and longer by the time they get there. Not always easy just to stop doing that. You know, some, it's interesting because I will never forget the day, the, the moment the nurse passed me my first baby. And I looked at her and I thought, man, this is not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to feed you? Like, who's going to feed you three times a day? You know, uh -huh. the oxytocin, you know, that's the bonding hormone. But anyway. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the time just goes like this, doesn't it? It just goes like this. Incredible. And then they're gone, you know? So, um, and, and it, it's interesting because no matter what else I did uh, as a woman and as a human being, and, and there's lots of things in, in my life that happened over that time span, you know, that were personal and, and through marriage and all kinds of things. But, but one thing that was always there in the background was that, okay, these kids, I take care of these kids. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. that's almost like the, everything else kind of gets stacked on top of that. Mm -hmm. That can never be secondary. Well, maybe it can for some folks. That yeah, for me, it wasn't. In jail because of neglect or something. <laughs> Just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> no, it, for me, it was really my whole identity. Mother. Yeah. That was it. That was it. And uh, I had had a history of um, agoraphobia. And can you, what is that? Oh, agoraphobia is a fear of uh, being out in the world. It's, I was, I. Wow. Had a problem going to the grocery store sometimes. Being around people was a highly stressful, anxiety-inducing event for me. Um, I couldn't speak even in front of my closest family. At my own wedding, I couldn't say thank you to everybody for coming at my children's christenings. I couldn't stand up and say a word. Wow. Um, so I was quite, you know, the extreme introvert. But boy, I loved being a mother, and that was great. And you know. <clears throat> Strangely enough, when it came to my kids, I somehow found that power that I needed when it was needed to push and get the things done that I, I would never have done for myself. They make it, they have us do that, don't they? We go, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing, you know, how us women are wired. Like, we're so wired to, to take care of these kids, you know? And, yeah. and it's like, uh, you know, if somebody, if somebody told you, like, hey, I'm on the other side of the wall and I'm going ki to kill your kid, like, you just ki you kick the wall down, you know? Yeah, the wall, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so for me, it was, it was my whole identity, really. And as it came time for, you know, as Jesse, my one was already off at university and my other one was preparing. And I thought, I can remember sitting in this very seat at my computer and wondering, who am I? Who am I? And if I'm not a mother, I don't even know if I exist. Wow. I, I completely lost my own sense of self. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so I just started by going and taking an EFT weekend course, uh, a level one. And then from there, I just started um, 
first thing I did was to work on getting rid of my fear of flying. <clears throat> I, had, <clears throat> I had a very difficult time flying. It was in, connected with um, kind of a claustrophobia fear, or, you know, claustrophobia phobia. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, tapped that away first things first. I went out, got on a plane. I couldn't work myself up if I tried. And I tried. You know, I tried to really get myself going. Like, oh, what if that person puts their seat back? It's going to get crowded in here. So that was, you know, I really knew it worked really well. And the more I got into it, the more I knew I wanted to bring it to other people. Cool. You know, I'm talking in front of groups of people or, you know, anyone. <clears throat> Next thing I know, I, I suddenly discovered my own self-worth. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, it's interesting, like this whole self-worth thing, like that I, I was shocked for myself. Like I got a lot of things going on in my life. I got a lot of really great things going on in my life. And, and when I noticed, I thought, wow, this big piece of me so connected to the kids and my self-worth. And I remember, I didn't recognize it at first. And then I thought, what is this hole? Or, you know, what is this thing I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, like, what is this? I didn't recognize it at first, and then I realized, ah, empty nest. But what you're going to tell us today doesn't just doesn't just impact or doesn't is does not just apply to empty nest. What you're going to tell us actually applies to to all big life changes. Yeah, it, it applies to anything you do, really. I mean, there you know certain certain things are true of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the the path you take with it will be different but anything <clears throat> anything you're trying to do there's really five steps that you need to take in my opinion okay. and so your first thing is you want to get a clarity around your goal what is it you want and what does that look like for you for instance if you want to reconnect with your spouse and that's your goal it's like oh my marriage is you know going to going nowhere i want to reconnect well, you've got to get clarity around what that means for you because I can't tell you what a successful marriage is for someone else. So, right. you know, you've got to set the goal, but you must have clarity around it so that you know what you think a successful marriage is or whatever, whatever your goal is. Just get clarity around it. Then you're going to have to figure out the steps. What are you going to do? Hmm. What needs to be done so that you can accomplish this? You know, what needs to change? What, what, what do you need? Do you need money? Do you need more time? You got to, you got to get your action plan going. <clears throat> hmm. I, you know, I just have a, you know, when, when you say about getting clear about what you want. Yeah. It's my experience in my work that, that women, not so much men, and, and, and it's probably not the men that really have an issue with empty nests. Would you say? In less, in my opinion, in, in my experience, less men have a problem. They look forward to it more than women. You know, some women may too. Listen, based on the TV commercials, all the parents are jumping and dancing around the store waiting for their kids to leave. So that was never me. I never liked those commercials. So I, yeah. I don't know. But yes, my experience is that this is more of an issue for women than men. Right. So how can a woman, okay, so when she's feeling, because I work with a lot of women like this, they're feeling, like, oh, they're kind of lost, you know, how, you know, based on what you do, how could they, how could they even get clear on what they want? When you say the first step is like, okay, well, what do you want? Right. What if they, I hear from a lot of women, I don't know what I want. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is one trick that I use. Let's hear it. And um, Listen up, is, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> listen up. So you're thinking, and I used this with someone the other day, and it was quite funny. And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. I said, you have to. And boom, she came up with an answer. And what this, the trick is, is I don't know what I want. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. I don't know. So you say, okay, you don't know. Let's say you're writing a story. You are writing a story or a book about this person who's in exactly your position. What is their story? Mm. And then you'll be like, well, I don't know. I just said I don't know. Well, no, you have to. Make something up if you have to. Mm. So it's like, okay, I don't know what I want. Well, so your kids have just left. You 
have never worked, maybe you have a job, whatever your situation is, your character is going to be in that situation. What do they, what is their storyline going to be? You know what I love about this character, what I really love is yeah. that what, what you're pointing to is that you kind of step back, right? It's like, you're, yeah. you're like writing a story now. Like, you know what? It's almost like performance pressure. It's, it's like sex, you know, you feel this <laughs> performance pressure. It's like, what do you want? It's like, ah, oh, it's, <laughs> it's too much pressure. Yeah. yeah. So you can step yeah. back and say, okay, I'm writing a story. Okay, mm -hmm. heats off of me. I'm just writing a story. I like that because right. when yeah. you can, in a lot of this stuff, that's what I will tell people. Say, see if you can pull back a little bit. Yeah. Pull back so that you're not in the middle. Just pull back a little bit so that you're kind of on the outside looking in. A little mm -hmm. more freedom that way. For sure. I mean, some people are very in touch with their feelings and some people have worked a lot of years to get far away from their feelings and they aren't very familiar. <laughs> so you want to reconnect, but if you can't do it, if you can't figure it out for yourself, figure out what you think your character would do and then try that on for size and see if it actually turns out to be what you want as well. That's cool. Kind of what I see a little bit in, in that what you, is a little bit of dreaming. Dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Because if you were writing a story, anything could happen. And in life, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why, it, you know, it's a perfect method for figuring it out. Anything yes. can happen in your story. I love like, that. I love that. I'm going to use that. Tell yeah. Story. Like it's, you're, you're out of it and you're telling a story, like your ideal story or your fun oh. story or your writing. Or if you're writing a book, you're just yeah. writing a book and you want to get it published. What's your character going to be doing? I like it because that pressure is, is off. Okay. Carry on. What else? Okay. All right. So then after you have figured out what you're going to do, you then, if you need to, you will upgrade your skills depending on what your goal is. You may or may not need to, you know, if you want to travel the world, you might need to learn some languages or if you want to start a business, you might need to take an accounting course or depending on what you want to do, upgrade your skills if necessary. Hmm. Hmm. So, so, you know, when you talk, I think about, uh, I just talked to a woman the other day. She said, um, what, what is the longest time that people have been married that have done your program? and it's 40 years wow 40 years okay so and I've worked with a lot of these people you know uh, that have been uh, kids have long gone and there they are and they're kind of they look at one another and they go oh my god <laughs> you know like I don't even know you and oh my god you know I'm getting on in years but you know as you talk I think of Louise Hay okay a lot of people know Louise Hay yeah. I mean, she started Hay House at, what was she, 60 years old when she started that publishing company. And her deal, um, um, it, for people that don't know her, she's put a lot of uh, people in the self-development world in, in front of other people, uh, people like Wayne Dyer, uh, Deepak Chopra, I mean, um, and, and her thing was that she... I don't know, like maybe you know this. I think she passed away when she was in her 90s. And her thing was what she would be learning another language, you know, when she was in her 70s. So when you say this about upgrading your skills, mm -hmm. I think that for some of us, for many of us, you know, we get on an age and somehow we get into this mindset that it's like, maybe it's like it's all over. <laughs> yeah. Or a lot of it's over. Yes. And it's not over. It's not, and it's funny you should mention Louise Hay because she is the exact person I have thought of mm. many times when I've been telling myself, Carol, you're too old to get into this. Uh, so did you think that? Absolutely. And then I said, well, Louise Hay didn't start Hay House. Yes. yes. Come on. It is exactly what I said to myself yeah. because we do get caught up in that I'm too old. But here's the trick. The time's going to pass anyway. Okay, so here we are. We're in life. We're living. You're going to do something and the time will pass or you're going to do nothing. And it still will pass. pass. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you're doing something that's worthwhile that you enjoy and, you know, don't doubt yourself. It's, mm. it's very easy to say that. We all doubt ourselves. But I love that. So if you're listening to this, like, listen up, because that's really important there, what she just pointed to, you know, it's not over until it's over. That's right. Until you're dead. It's not yeah. over. 
And it's like, oh my gosh, it's going to take me five years to do that. Well, once again, that five years is going to pass and then you'll either be at your goal or you won't. Yeah. There's, no, there's no changing that the time is going to pass. Yeah. But jump on it and do it. If it's long term, if it's short term, I how love that. old you are. I love that. That's inspiring. Carry on. What's next? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the next thing is you're going to optimize your environment. Depending on what your goal is, you might need to optim optimize your environment. If you were trying to lose weight, you'd want to clean out your pantry of all your junk food. Um, you know, if you're trying to accomplish a goal, start a business, um, write a book, and you've got somebody who's always telling you you're not good enough, well, you're going to optimize your environment by stepping away from that relationship. Whatever it takes to get your environment friendly, what you're trying to achieve, that's what you have to do. Okay, and how might that look for people who are either in an empty nest situation or going into an empty nest situation? What might that look like? I mean, for, for me, hmm, I don't know. I, I can't even come up with anything right now. What, what yeah, well, like it depends. Everybody is different. If somebody is very, um, say they've always had um, a playroom or a games room for their kids, and it's like, well, they're not really gonna be using it anymore, but I could use an office. Good. Or use a meditation space. Great. Or, use somewhere to study my new language I'm learning whatever it is if it makes you sad to have a lot of their stuff around tuck it away if it makes you happy to have lots of their pictures up put their pictures up whatever it means to you that will make you happier in the time that's how you're going to optimize your environment love that yeah okay. love that love that because we often and especially too like don't forget people like this does, doesn't not just apply to empty nesters. It's any kind of a, a big life change that you're going through. And, and often, you know, we don't do that. Even I look around, you know, like I've been doing this business for almost 15 years and there's some stuff that just doesn't reflect that <laughs> when I look at my environment, you know, so it's a really great suggestion. What's next? All right. The next thing, the last thing, the hardest thing, in my opinion, is you're going to have to master the psychology to get all of this done. You've got to wrap your head around it, commit to it and do it. And that it depends. A lot of people have different ways of doing it. Yes, he has helped me to master the psychology around the idea of trying to help other people because I'm like a lot of other people who thought, who, are, who the heck do you think you are to try and help other people? You know, yeah. I had to tap to get rid of those thoughts and to come to the, to the realization that I do have things to offer, that I do have, I can be of benefit. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so that's all a part of mastering the psychology of whatever you want to do and whatever your thoughts on it are. Well, I want to write a book. Well, you can't write a book. Why can't you write a book? If anyone can write a book, anyone can write a book. Like some people write books, so anyone can write a book. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, you're not limited because you think you are. And you also don't have to believe everything you think. Yes. You can take some of those negative thoughts and let them go and acknowledge them up. Oh, there you are again, negative thought coming up. You're trying to stop me. Don't let it stop you. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not trying to make light of it, but that will be your final step. Once you have everything in plan and you have all your steps laid out before you, you will still have to master the psychology around getting it done. Which is almost... Kind of the biggest piece, maybe, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, um, and, I, and I see this in the area of relationship, that, that, that kids are kind of like the glue. Yeah. And kids can take, take a, they can almost be, I kind of hate to say this, but I don't, but whatever. It's, it's almost like they can be like an excuse. You know, oh, the kids, the kids. And so you don't, you put your dreams at the back. You, 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 you kind of stop experiencing what it is to have that courageous edge. Yeah. So, well, I mean, to, yes. Yeah. To go to somewhere unknown, you know, to yeah. be willing to face danger. 
pretty predictable. You know, <laughs> kids, you feed them three times a day, you get their clothes, you know what I mean? I mean, that's what I find. When I look back on my life, that was really a grounded, very predictable thing for me, you know? Yeah. Things are kind yeah, of the same. Yeah, it's nice, nicely scheduled. Everything's going the way it's supposed to, and that's what yeah. we do this day, and we get up at that time, and we eat at this time, and then yeah. this lesson or that lesson on whatever day it's going. It is. It's all very laid out for you. Um, there's no fear. There's no unknown. It's just, here's what we're going to do. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's an un, you know, there are time to time, there'll be an unknown, like, oh, where are they? They're not answering their phone. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But as, a, as a whole, the plan of your life is very predictable and it's not very scary. I mean, it's scary when you step out of your comfort zone. And also your focus is somewhere else. Not yeah. on yourself. So let's talk yeah. a little bit about what's the deal with women and, and uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about well, women, and you know, how, how we are with like, can, you know, we, we kind of don't, we kind of put ourselves last. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, I don't know where it comes from exactly, but I do know that seems to be what we're brought up to do. We're brought up thinking everyone else's stuff is more important and we'll just do that first and we'll do that first and we'll, well, you know, I have to do this because that would be best for the kids or that would be best for my marriage or often we're all, we're putting ourselves behind. And I suppose there's a place for that. Like I, I, I didn't mind putting some of my stuff aside when my kids needed me It can be a conscious choice, but it can also be a habit that gets to be mm. to break if you're doing it in every situation. And I like to think about, um, if you're on an airplane and the cabin pressure dropped, the pilot will tell you, you must put on your own mask first before you help those around you. As you can help everybody and then you'll be unconscious and of used to nobody. Right. So in life, you must put on your own oxygen mask first. You have to take care of yourself in order to be healthy and be able to take care of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... That's what women have to do, and it's not always easy, but I'll tell you what, it feels kind of good when you do it. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's helpful to have a coach. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I don't know who gets through it alone. I just don't know. I've, I've had a lot of help from a lot of different places in personal and business adventures in my life, and uh, it's hard. It's hard doing it on your own. Yeah, yeah, and me too, because that's kind of my my deal. My shtick is like all this self development stuff. But there's a lot of people who are not into that. That's right. right? Yeah, because it's yeah. not part of their career. And probably for us, it's our career. So mm -hmm. you, you know, it comes kind of part and parcel with the deal. It comes you know, second with, nature a little yeah. bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people wouldn't stop and think about the the idea of even putting themselves first. I mean, myself, I used to fairly frequently call myself a loser in my head. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago before I had any thought to the idea of what a, what a pointless thing to do. That's not helping anybody anywhere. And uh, mm -hmm. people will just do these things without thinking, without stopping to think that there's a better way, mm -hmm. and then, you know, if you wouldn't call anyone else a loser, certainly don't call yourself a loser. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. So this whole aspect, I think of, of uh, okay, so what are the, what are the, did you say there's five steps or four steps? Well, we went over the five steps that you need to do to uh, just get a plan and, at, you know, plan going for anything. Okay. So recap. Okay. So recap was to set your goal. Set your goal. So that means now... Set your goal. Do you, and then the next thing is, to, is get focused on what you want or is, is getting what you or getting focused on what you want part of setting the goal? Well, getting clarity around what you want is setting your goal. Once you have clarity on what you want, you've got your goal. Okay. And then you've got to come up with a strategy. Right. Okay. So the second one would be the strategy. What are you going to do to get that goal? What needs to happen in your life so that you can achieve this goal? Hmm. 
Okay, and then the third thing is if you need it, you're gonna upgrade your skills. Depending on your goal, you may not need to upgrade your skills, but I mean, as you said, even when it comes to marriage, if your, if your goal is to reconnect in your marriage, then upgrading your skills could mean going to a retreat, one of your retreats, because you lose, you forget how to be in a relationship. Right. So yeah. upgrading your skills can mean things other than the classic, go back to school. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the fourth thing would be to optimize your environment. Going to mean whatever goal you've set, you want your environment to help you along the way. If you're just trying to be happy, then you've got to find, you know, set aside your space and be happy with the fact that your kids are leaving, for instance. You've got to set up your environment so you're not sad thinking about them all day long. And even I just thought of something that your environment, it's possible that that could even be your physical situation. <clears throat> For example, you know, I got, <clears throat> got some issues going on with um, just some muscles shortened and I'm having some difficulties with my hip. Yeah. My deal is I would love to take some dance lessons. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, like, okay, so it's a great way to connect with your partner, do something different, right? Where you're That's doing perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I, cause I noticed that in your list, it may, that, that particular thing may not be necessarily encompassed in that list unless we do it that way too. Like your environment. It, like, it is your environment, environment, right? Your environment is the air you breathe. It's the place you work. It's the people you surround yourself with. It's the place you live. Your environment is everything. And I would absolutely agree that that falls under optimizing your environment. You've got to take care of whatever ailment you have. Yes. So that you can do your dance lessons. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Certainly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I would put that under there for sure. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And the last one. The last one is mastering the psychology around getting it done. Everything that you mapped out, you've got to get, you've got to gear yourself up, psych yourself up and just do it. That's a biggie. Okay. And so that kind of, I'm going to just <clears throat> interject in here. Um, one of the things that Carol's going to offer is 60 minute discovery session for anybody who stays to the end. And we're going to tell you when we get to the end, <clears throat> how to, you know, cash in on that. Okay. So she's going to give you 60 minutes. That's one hour yeah. of, of helping you to get clear and, and to maybe get started on these, on these five steps, but we'll say more about that later. So tell us how, what would it look like, Carol, if a person was using emotional freedom technique? Like, can you, can you take us through like a, a, a kind of a quick meditation or a, um, what, what would it look like if we were using emotional freedom technique to, you, you know, let's just say I was having some kind of a crisis, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't know what I want. I'm flipped out. Like, oh my God, what's my purpose? Who am I? Okay. What would yeah. it look like? All right, so that would look like the, you, there are points that you tap on. And the thing you start with is you start tapping on the side of your hand. That's the first point. And while you tap on the side of your hand, you're going to repeat a statement three times. It's basically the statement of where you are in the moment. Okay. So, so even it's though, not like I'm freaked out because I don't know who I am. Right, right. So if you would just repeat after me, even though I'm freaked out because I don't know who I am. Even though I'm freaked out because I don't know who I am. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. And even though. And even though. I don't know where I'm going to go in life. I don't know where I'm going to go in life. I accept myself where I am today. I accept myself where I am today. And even though. And even though. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. I love every part of me, including that. I freak. love every part of me, including that freak out. Yeah. That's, that's it for the side of the hand. Then we would start tapping on the points, starting with above the eyebrow, near the inside edge of the eyebrow, just above it. Sort of, uh, yeah, right here. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. And you're going to move to the side of the eye. I'm really freaking out because I don't know what I want. I'm really freaking out because I don't know what I want. And then you're going to go under the eye. It's not a good feeling to not know where to go. It's not a good feeling to not know where to go. Under the nose. 
I usually know what I want to do. I usually know what I want to do. Then on the chin. I always have known. I always have known. But not anymore. But not anymore. Now we're going to go to the collarbone. And that's freaking me out. So this is the collarbone, just uh, kind of just to the inside edge of where you feel the hard bone there. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, so this, now I don't know what I'm going to do. Now I don't know what I'm going to do. Now we're going to go under the arm. For ladies, it's like right on the bra strap. Yeah, it's like, this is, it should flow a little more smoothly than this normally, but we get the, once you get the, the points down the tapping points it goes smoother but I'm just giving you an idea folks <laughs> yeah yeah so under the arm and you're still gonna go I'm just still so freaked out I'm still so freaked out and then top of the head okay but I still love myself I still love myself okay so let's try and go around the points again I won't say them just try and follow so Perfect. and we'll try again so I'm really freaked out I'm really freaked out I don't know what I want I don't know what I want. I'm supposed to set a goal. I'm supposed to set a goal. And I don't have a clue. And I don't have a clue. I just don't know what I want. I just don't know what I want. But I know I want to find out what I want. But I know I want to find out what I want. And so I'm staying open to that shift in my mind. And so I'm staying open to that shift in my mind. To allow myself to discover what I want. To allow myself to discover what I want. And then you'd keep on with the points and going on and on about mm -hmm. where you are in the moment. And eventually you'd shift into, you know, maybe I would like this. Maybe I would like that. Maybe I would like the most important thing when you're tapping is the more specific you can get to your specific problem, then the more success you're going to have. Right. Which is, which is what you would do, right? Because it's like, if you're, if you're doing it for yourself, yeah, if you're doing I think, it, you're know, I think Carol, like you, there is a lot of stuff on YouTube, but when you and I were talking, it's always best, isn't it, to if you work with a practitioner who can actually address you. Yeah, and I don't discount those. Those are great videos. You know, a lot of them are very helpful and they're a good way to get going. And I've known people to have a lot of success using them. I get it, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's all when you, that's, that's for general stuff. People yeah. who are anxious can, you know, find videos on tapping on anxiety. But if you just want to deal with your own personal stuff, sometimes your own stories from when you're a child or whatever, then yeah, you, you need a practitioner. You, you would do better with a practitioner. Yeah. I have had to use practitioners myself to get through yeah. all my stuff. I have not dealt with all my stuff on my own. Well, I hear you because, you know, for me, after my anxiety, I, I had this practitioner that was like, I got, like, you know, when you said, like, you got the conversation, I'm a loser. Like, I was having some weird stuff uh, going on in my head. And, um, and it was good, you know, like, she worked with me for an hour and a half. And it was stuff that, you know, well, it was just really, it was, um, it was personal to me, you know, like, she took yeah. me to certain situations. And, um, and, and here's the thing she's not going to get enrolled in what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, she knows how it goes. She's not going to say, she's not going to all of a sudden stop the, in other words, I guess, sorry, you guys, what I'm trying to say is like, she's not going to judge or he, no. they're not going to judge and say, Oh, you poor thing. No, no they're not going to do that. <laughs> or they're not going to go, Oh my God, that person was a jerk. No, no, that's not the point. They're going to no. keep you on track to deal with whatever it is you got going on, which is, which is what you want. Right. And I think that's the difference. Like, um, like, like Carol says, there's nothing wrong with doing it yourself, but when you, when you're working with a professional, yeah. isn't this in anything, isn't it like anything, right? Coach anything, anything you're doing, right? Yeah. You're going to work with a professional. The idea is they're trained. They're going to, they're going to take you somewhere. That's the whole deal. That's what they're trained to do. For sure. And I mean, you know, even close family members of mine, I've had to refer them to another practitioner because yeah. as you said, I am too involved. You know, if my own child is going to start telling me a story about something that's like, Oh no, honey, no, you know, I can't be, in. 
you know, and, uh, you know, of course they need to be able to be free to talk about anything, including if it involved me. So yeah, it's tough. Yes. Like how do you listen to your kid tell you you're a jerk? Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just went to, I went on a trip to visit my dad and my kids were, were uh, <laughs> with me. My daughter's probably not going to see this, so I'm going to say it. She's almost 30 and, and all of us, there was three of us and we kind of got into this thing, you know, like the thing, the family thing, the family thing, the family thing. Yeah. And, um, and I was, I'll never, if I was standing by the sink and I'm trying to go, uh-huh. And she's kind of letting me know, you know, how I'm landing on her. And, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to be all mature. And meanwhile, inside, I'm like, I'm starting to freak out, right? Yeah. I'm getting all triggered. Human nature, we, you know, exactly. if, if the, the closer sometimes, you know, we, we uh, get into some of these sticky situations, the harder it is for us. And, and... One of the things that us human beings do that's that's not so smart is we think we're going to take stuff on ourselves. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that just makes you two people worried. <laughs> you can't take it on for somebody else, right? That's yeah. not going to... Yeah. But I've done it. I'm not saying I haven't done it. I take it on and, you know, walk around like it's my own pain. That doesn't help anybody either. Mm, yeah. That's you know, so anyway, um, yes, this is the thing with a practitioner. You'll get that non judgmental distance that's needed to see it from another point of view and yeah, and get to the bottom of your own specific issues. Yeah, that's what working with a professional is all about, right? No matter what, you know, no matter what the field, right? So, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay, so awesome. So, so let's zone in on couples who are freaked out <laughs> about being together, whether, you know, w I mean, we're talking about emptiness situation. And yeah. the thing is, is when the kids leave, that's, that's probably the time when we are most, you know, we're, we're taking, it's like, uh Oh, I mean, I remember doing at each other, like we're alone here. Yeah, exactly. This woman yeah. was like, Oh my God. There he is. <laughs> she says, there's nobody else around. There he is. She says, I don't know from her. Yeah, she's married to him for 28 years. She says, I don't even know who he is. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what he's talking about. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very true. And so <clears throat> any, anything that once you're, when you're approaching empty nest, if that's when it's occurring to you, that's when you plan ahead and do it. I mean, right. this is like, like if you know, your kids are leaving and you don't know who the heck your husband is, you might already start with a little bit of planning ahead and getting to know them so that when they're gone and it's just the two of you, you're not just living with a stranger, you know, and I think that that's the key for everybody plan ahead, whatever your situation is. And, um, with a couple, I mean, you can, um, plan a date night every week. Um, I, you might not have a clue what to say to this person. Yeah, because I mean, really, listen, we, you know, we've been together for 28 years. It's like, what am I going to say to you? Like, what's new? <laughs> you know, yeah. You know what? A lot of people, listen, I found that in my practice, a lot of people don't have date night because they're, they're afraid. Yeah. They that's what they're going to talk about. That's right. It's like, maybe watch a movie because then you don't have to talk. But right. you won't, if you don't talk, you won't connect. You won't ever, yeah. you know be on that same wavelength together. And if you don't know what to say, plan ahead. Make up three three questions you want to ask or, you know, three mm. things you want to talk about. And you can find all kinds of resources online that would advise you of interesting topics to bring up. And um, you want to, it's not, you're not just putting in the time. You're not just, you know, checking off a list. Okay, I brought that up, I brought that up, I brought that up, or, you know, having an interview over dinner, questioning. You're looking for a topic that will just get the conversation flowing. So now, you know what else I hear kind of in your, in, in, when you're speaking <coughs> to me, is, is this notion of like curiosity. Yeah. You know, that, that as you listen to your partner, you can listen with a curious mind Instead yeah. of like, I know you, because <laughs> that's what we do. Too. It's like, I know everything about you. You know, what, what, what is there new to say? But if you listen with a, with a curious mind, rather now, 
here's another thing that I think sometimes, um, and, and I think that it's particularly women that do this, not men. Women will kind of test, yeah. <laughs> you know, that probably doesn't work in the situation, you know, like just be curious, like don't, don't be, don't be expecting a certain kind of answer. And then, you know, when you don't, when you don't hear what you want to hear, there's just a whole lot of make wrong, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. I mean, after that many years, there can be so many feelings and there can be resentments. There can be yeah. lack of interest. There can be, um, you know, take an interest in what they have to say mm -hmm. and don't set traps and don't take offense and just look to, look, yeah. the bottom line is you're not there trying to reconnect so that you can catch them at something and laugh at them. Yeah. You want to reconnect. You've got to look at your bottom line goal. Is that what you want? If that's what you want, then you've got to let go of resentment. You've got to let that person be a human being who has flaws, but you choose to love them anyway. Mm. And let go of all of that garbage and just get down to kindness and communication. Mm. Because that's what you're there for. It, it's just... There's just no point in even saying you want to reconnect if you're going to go out there with a chip on your shoulder. I like that, Carol. That's, you know what, that's a big deal. I hope everybody's listening to that. You know, reconnecting is not about, what'd you say, setting traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And having a chip on your shoulder and trying to, you know, get in an argument. You, If you want to be there, make it easy on yourself. Let go of the resentments. Have an open heart. Yeah, open heart. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, and, and I, I think that um, I'm sure this is something that you go through on your retreats. This is stuff that you probably yeah. cover, and that's for empty nest couples and every couple. Uh, anyone who's ever been in a relationship can relate, I'm sure, to that feeling of I have nothing to say anymore, or we just don't talk anymore, or, you know, and when you don't talk, you don't want to talk. That's what your relationship can relate. I'm sure. Ooh, to sorry. I have nothing to say anymore. I got some stuff going on there. Sorry, I was I was just looking to see with the comments if there was any. I want to see if there's any questions. Yeah, go ahead and take a look and see. Yeah, give me a second. I'm just going to see if there's any questions. Um, okay. Now, um, yeah, I got to make sure that I mute this though. Hang on. Um, you know, that's the thing. I, I, when I start, uh, you know, when we do the retreats and I start the retreats, I know there's people coming in with all kinds of stuff. They're coming right. in with their own past. They're coming in with resentments. But, you know, <clears throat> I tell them flat out, okay, so, you know what? I got you for two days. Put all of that stuff at the door. It's like, yeah. you're doing that. <laughs> you're doing that all the time anyway. So, like, why do, like, take a break. Can that's you right. Like, pick it up on your way out if you really want to hold on to it. But for two days at least, let go and see how it feels. Yeah. 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 It's a good Let thing. me see if I can, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of these comments. Okay. okay. Give me a second here. Give me a second. Okay, so no comments, but, okay. but hello, Rachel, hello, Jacqueline, hello, Nanny Bell, uh, hello, Elaine, um, you know, there's a bunch of people listening, so, so that's cool. So thanks for, thanks for listening, and thanks for being yeah, here. Thank Good you. Questions for Carol, um, speak up. So, okay, so cool. So, okay, you know, let's get reconnected, right? No, yeah. what, and answer some questions. Sorry, go ahead, Carol. Sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, it's not the only thing you can do going out to dinner and talking. You can plan trips together. You can maybe plan a trip and also, you know, up leading up to it, go take language lessons. Maybe you're going to a country where they don't speak your language and you can go and take this class together and practice off each other. You know, you can go biking, take walks, take up a hobby together, you know, read the same book and then discuss it. Find a book that would interest you both. That's so cool. Yeah. Like there's so many things that you can do to reconnect with that person. Yeah. You know what I think as you're talking, I just think that this is what happens for people is that they're so afraid of judgment. Yeah. 
you know, and resentment, if that's there, which, I mean, you know, come on, after, after however many years, you know, like, and then the kids are gone, I think that that can be there. And it's the kids that can sometimes mask that, you know, like, yeah, yeah, like we're not, you know, we're, we're focused on the kids. So we just kind of, you know, we sort of ignore that. And then all of a sudden the kids are not there. And then there we are, we've got to be with each other. So I just think, again, I just want to go back to what you said about like, put, put that stuff behind. Yeah. Resentments. For yourself, not that you're letting him off the hook or her off the hook. You're not letting someone off the hook. You're doing it as a gift to yourself because you want happiness. Like it. And you're not going to be happy if you're walking around full of resentment. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I hear there, so anybody who's listening, you know, it's about being responsible for what you want. Yeah. Right? You take responsibility for what you want and, and that what, you know, whatever you're up to, it would make sense that it be in alignment with what you say you want. Absolutely. You want to get reconnected. Yeah. Then you're not going to be drudging up all the resentments you got because they're not in alignment. <laughs> they are not. They're not in alignment at all. I like that. So let go of resentments. That's huge. What's next? Anything, anything um, else? Well, no, just all the things I was saying, you know, with the read a book together, take, join a gym together, take a class together, mm -hmm. learn a new language together. Just do things together that interest you. When you share an interest with somebody, you automatically get closer. You reconnect. Yeah. And, you know, go on one of your retreats. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm obviously would say that, but whatever. <laughs> so that's really cool. So, so I love it. So, okay, Carol, so that's really great. So you've really given people like a lot of value for the past, how long you've been talking, maybe an hour, maybe not. I know. It's Getting like, close. An hour, Getting Carol. So that's really great. So, so I love that. So tell us how can people find out more about you? Where okay. should they go? They can go to my Facebook group, which is called Thriving in an Empty Nest. If they go there, there's a tapping script in the files. There's um, a diagram of all the tapping points. Just go into the file section. Yeah, and so, don't, and so for those of you who don't know exactly what she's talking about, what she's talking about is emotional freedom technique, and, and it's tapping. That's kind of like the common, common term for it. And so, you know, we're going through all these points. What she's got for you is like an illustration of what those points are, because it's my understanding that even if you don't 100% know what you're doing, even if you're upset or if you have some kind of a belief, you can just say it to yourself in your mind yeah and tap and it'll kind of that's right now you can start with the where you are which is often a negative place but as you're tapping you might find some positive thoughts coming to you sometimes you feel the shift right in the middle well almost always you feel the shift right in the middle and then you can start talking the positive stuff you're feeling and that way you're going to reinforce it and you're going to uh, make it stronger keep it with you but yes, so that is tapping is EFT and that, that is in my Facebook group. I That's have generous. That's awesome. That's really great. And so, um, two, you know, you go in there and you've got any questions, Carol will answer, you know, answer them, um, in that. Group. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're going through, we can always tailor a little bit of, uh, tapping script, put a post another one up based on whatever you're dealing with. They're general, you know, but they can be helpful. Perfect. Uh, you can go to, my website www.eft-time t-i-m-e dot c-a and uh, you can contact me there you can email me at carol c-a-r-o-l at eft-time dot c-a and if you just put donna's interview in the subject line that's how i'll know where you're coming from and we'll get you your free hour booked i'll send you my calendar link and you can have your free one hour session booked. That's so generous, Carol. Now, what happens if somebody listens to this sometime down the road? Is there a time limit on this or not? Like, what's your scoop on that? I mean, what I have to say is good, but I just want to let the people know, like, because what, what is it? It's uh, August 22nd, 2018. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. you know, I mean, this is gonna be out there, right? So what's, what's your scoop on that? Well, this is going to be, let's give this uh, maybe two weeks, 
Wow. Two weeks, anyone can get it for an hour. Now, it's I offer half an hour every session with anybody anyway, so it's not that you can't get some free time with me. But an hour, you can, that time. Lot, you can get a lot done in an hour. You, yeah, you can get a lot done in an hour. We'll, we'll try and figure out, you know, where your thoughts are, what you, what your goal would be, get some plan in place about what you need to do to get to achieve it. Um, but if it's past that time, if it's past two weeks, then, you know, you can still get something. You can you go back to the half an hour, but Carol, yeah. that's really generous of you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me on your, okay. your Facebook. So what's the name of the, uh, you know what, actually you guys, I'm going to put it in a link below. Okay. I'm going to put, um, Carol's Facebook page down below in a link. And I'm also going to put her, um, website page down there. And I'm also going to put her email. Okay, right? that'd be great. That'd be great, Donna. Thank you. Okay. Carol, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with? No, no, I'm on the spot. I can't think of anything else. Darn, sorry, girl. Yeah. No. <laughs> One final thing. Oh, no. Even it's okay. I don't know listen, what to you say. Know, listen, you've done really awesome. Like, you've been so clear, and you've given us some really great, um, you know, like the five steps that we can take to really achieve anything, whether it's a yeah. big life change, whether it's empty nest, whether you want to take on a business, whether you want to overcome something, whether you're, you know, moving away from something, moving towards something, which is awesome. And you've given us some, uh, you, you know, four, at least four really great suggestions to how to get connected with your partner. If you're in the empty nest situation or you want to prepare for the empty nest situation. So, so Carol McMulkin, I thank you so much. This has been wonderful. And um, to every, anybody who's um, listening to this, thank you for tuning in. And um, we we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you.